Well, hello to the uh, two people and one stray dog who are probably still here watching this. Thank you for your patience. Uh, what a disapp disappointing result to the cricket match, but what an amazing contest. Um, I couldn't miss that, but thank you for bearing with me. Anybody who is still here, there are a few people still here. It's incredible. You've done, wow, I'm, I'm so proud of you. Or maybe your parents have just forced you to sit and wait. Anyway, uh, today we're going to be looking at... Um, uh, this reasoning past paper, this, this uh, verbal reasoning past paper mainly, from a Stockport Grammar School. It's a long paper, I'm not going to be looking at every question, I'm going to be picking some questions out as we go through. Um, someone saying, well, well I have to give a shout out to the entrepreneur who says, so excited, let's go. Wow! Um, that's amazing that you're sitting here at 7.30 in the evening, an hour and a half after this was due to begin, still feeling so excited. Well, seeing as you're so excited, let's go. So, here we are. This is the paper. Uh, you would have 50 minutes for this, or 100 questions. So, that's half a minute per question, which is quite a reasonable pacing, because a lot of reasoning questions, you can just, you know, spot the answer very quickly, and then you'll have a bit more time to think about the other ones. So. Let's get on to the first question. Which one letter ends all the words in each question? So for example, P star colour four, and colour should be a big clue. Of course it's R, pair star colour four. Let's look at question one. So wrist, we might think rise, but then bear, okay. Blows, no. Plain, yeah, so that almost works. Um, it's a bit tricky looking at wrists. We sort of look at it and think there must be lots of things that could end that. There aren't so many options actually, but let's move on. Um, bar. Mm, oh, third one. Block. We got a C. What's going to come after it? Of course, it really wants to be a K. Risk, bark, block, plank. So nice and straightforward. I hope my pen is working. Yes, everything's working. So we got a K. Let's skip on to the fifth one because I think these are relatively straightforward. It's kind of a warm-up question. So again, we look at B and is it bean? Is it you know? It could be various things. I think let's sort of look through. Class ah clam, claim no clamp. Surely that's the only one that comes to mind. Maybe clams, clams or clamp. So it could be beep or bees. It could be could it be class? No, it could be clasp. So beep, clasp, clamp, and heap. So what we're doing with these is we are playing with different options, but we're trying to avoid the words which give us lots of possible last letters. We're looking f through for a word that doesn't give us so many options. So for example, block in one really steered us towards a K. And the third one again in five, clam, really steered us towards a P or an S. And then we just needed to try those out with the other um, sets of letters there. I can't believe there are currently 56 people watching this live. I thought there'd be about three by this point. Um, thank you so much for your patience. I won't keep doing this every week. Um, but you know, Ashes Cricket. Right, uh, it's a, you know, it's, a, it's, 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 it's an illness. Um, and when it gets to you, there's nothing you can do about it. Right, uh, we got the same thing here, but we're starting the words. So, hmm, ocket, uh, pocket, rocket, Pipple, ripple, roll, rich. So again, this is quite straightforward. If we look for one that's rel that gives us few options, Ocket was one of those. Let's skip to the last one, number nine. Um, so rave could be crave, clank, court. No, that would be with an A. Cring should be a word, but uh, it has a, a nice sort of Norse sound to it, but it isn't. Um, brave, blank, bought, bring. So I don't think there's too much to puzzle most people too much in those. Um, but as with every kind of reasoning question, it's about having a good system. Even when the questions are relatively easy, having a good system will stop you from getting stuck. Let's move on. Um, let's go over the page. Now, this one is about close meanings. I've covered a lot of these in my reasoning videos, so I'm going to move on. There are a hundred questions in this paper. I don't want to get bogged down. Um, it's not necessarily that those are super easy. Some of them are a little bit fiddly, but I have covered synonyms and similar meanings a lot in my other reasoning videos, and you can look at those videos to see how you do those questions. Um, let's skip to question 16 down here. So here we're looking, we need to underline the one word 
which does not belong in each of these lists. So always read the question very carefully and make sure that you aren't missing crucial words such as not. Um, Afnan very kindly says, honestly, you need to be a teacher. Well, I have been a teacher. Um, isn't that what I'm doing? I hope it's what I'm doing. What am I doing here? What is this? Who are all these people? Um, anyway, before I get too crazy. So it's, it's unbelievably hot in this room and I've got the lights on me and I've just watched, I've just suffered watching England marginally lose an incredibly tense cricket match. I can't do this, people. Right, which word does not belong? Pride, flock, shoal, fish. So pride, you, know, you feel very proud of, you know, I don't know what I feel pride of right now. Um, um, I haven't been such a loyal England supporter. Um, flock, Hang on, flock and shoal, so a flock of sheep, a shoal of fish, a pride of lions. These are all groups of different kinds of animal. Can you have a fish of animal? No. A fish is an individual animal. It can also be a plural, lots of fish in the sea, but it isn't a specific plural noun. You can't say there is a fish of tuna, for example in the way that you can say a pride of lions, a flock of sheep, a shoal of fish. So fish is the odd one out. We need to underline, not circle, so let's do that. Always make sure that you read the question carefully and do exactly what it wants. Let's have a look at 17. Boiled, fried, roasted, scrambled. Well, these are all ways of cooking things. So you might struggle a bit to find the odd one out here. But what kinds of things are we cooking? Boiled, fried, roasted, scrambled. Well, scrambled is quite specific. That's something you do with eggs. So maybe that's the odd one out because it's so specific. But then again, boiled, fried, you can do those with eggs as well. But roasted, you don't really talk about roasted eggs. I think that's going to be the odd one out because the others are all orthodox techniques for cooking eggs. I'm sure there are chefs, if there are any chefs watching this, screaming at me going, roasted egg is delicious. But anyway, Moving on before the screaming starts. What was I going to cover next? Oops, sorry, I just punched the microphone, kind of thing I do. Uh, the kind of thing I really do is punching the microphone and accidentally knocking the off button and not noticing and then giving a silent lesson. I've done that before. Okay, um, this one, opposite meanings. We've done loads of these before on the channel. I would look at them, but it's a long paper. Let's push on. Rearranging jum jumbled letters. Now, I have covered this lots of times before, but it's something that people find really difficult. And so I will have a look at some of these. So let's look at 22, the first one. Gav beetles are good for you. Hmm, they sound delicious. Gav beetles are good for you, are good for you, are good for you. What's good for you? Vitamins. So you always need to think in terms of the clue here. Don't start by obsessing about the letters. So I can see loads of people with the correct answer in the comments. Fantastic. Well done, people. Um, so this is the kind of thing that somebody would be likely to say. You're being invited to recognise a, a common or predictable statement. So what are good for you? Well, the letter that stands out for me here is V. So I think this is either going to be an Ave word, a word that ends in Ave, or Eve, or a word that begins with V. V, ah, hang on, vegetables. V, E, G, E, and you check through and it does indeed fit, so we can write that in. Um, you'd write it in. I put some of my mysterious hieroglyphs, which do allegedly denote letters of the English alphabet. Okay. Um, next ones, uh, I'm just going to tell you, um, superhero and parties. Let's look at 25. Clara Locust are not allowed in this exam. Um, I feel very sorry for Clara. I feel that she's being discriminated against for having an unusual surname. Um, anyway, Clara Locus is not allowed in this exam. What might not be allowed in an exam? Dictionaries, and so you start thinking through. Dictionaries, protractors, um, you know, cheat uh, notes of likely answers, all kinds of things that might not be allowed. Um, Calcu calculators and if you go through and check that you'll find that it does indeed fit and the key with these is always to spend time with the clues um, so for example who might wear a cape in a film and you're immediately thinking of Superman or of a vampire or something and by the time you played with some common ideas you're likely to spot superhero 
everyone enjoys going to well this is pretty open there are loads of things it could be but there aren't so many letters here and you've got the t-i-s-e that might give you some hints about the end of the word um, and you get it that way parties okay pushing forwards um, I've done loads on number codes I've actually got some specific videos on them um, if you look in my short videos by the way in linked in the video description there are two things that you should know about uh, one of them is that I always link the worksheet for the lesson so if you don't know about that you can go into the video description which is underneath on YouTube you might need to click an arrow to release the description and in that there's a link where you can download the worksheet but the other thing that's relevant here is that there's a list of every single video of mine and so you can look in that and you can find my um, I'm saying I'm um, a lot sorry I blame the cricket you find uh, my videos about number codes and you can watch them. Anyway, I'm not covering this for that reason. Right, onto this. So in the following questions, a letter can be taken from the first word, okay, and put into the second word to form two new words. Write both new words, okay? So very clear instructions in this example. So place and and, they've taken the L, so it becomes pace and land and not andal or anything else. Uh, okay? Now, you could also take the P and have lace, but then there's nowhere to put the P in the second word. So it must be the L that goes. So the first thing is to work out which letter you might take out, but sometimes there's more than one option. You have to pick the one that works with the second word. Let's look at the first and last here, okay? So song. Uh, could we take the S off? No, we'd have ong, uh, which is not a word in English, sadly. Um, hang on, sun, it's right in front of me. I reckon I should take the G out. Where should I put that? At the beginning, surely. Sun and gone. So there we are. Honestly, that's a G, I promise. Okay, on to the last one. Um, some people are putting answers in some of the other ones. Great, but I'm going to push on um, to look at number 33. Um, right, orange and bat. So I could have orang, not really. Any really exists in the in the. Lot. I'm going to move the camera a bit because I'm a bit low on the screen. That's it. Okay. Um, so we don't want that. But hang on, it's got orange, it's got range in it, hasn't it? Can we take the O out? Obat? So we can try the O in each space. Obat? Boat? Boat. So be very alert to the way that sounds can change. It's easy to put the O after the B and go, Boat, that's not a word, and not notice that it's actually the word boat. So be sensitive to that kind of thing. Different possible, um, you know, phonetic outcomes. In other words, words can sound different. So we got range and boat. So again, it's just about having a good system. You can just try each letter in turn, see what comes out, try it in the second word. You may see the answer much more quickly, but the thing about these is that if you just try it out systematically, um, you're likely to get there. 31, 31's an interesting one. Have a play with that on your own time if you want. Um, there may be more than one option there. Okay, what was I going to look at next? I'm motoring through these because there were some much trickier and more interesting logic questions towards the end, and I'd very much like to get to them if I can, but equally I don't want to keep you too long because I know it's already getting a little bit late. Um, so let's look at the first and last again. That's a decent system, I think. Um, I went to see the oars in the theatre. Play, players, who's in the theatre? Singers, actors. Actors act. I forgot to read the question. I'm terribly sorry. It's because I'm rushing. I, now, I've made a very, very, very bad exam mistake here, actually. I've done something that would be a serious problem if you did it in the exam, and I've done it by accident. So what I've done here is I've just charged it and started answering. You absolutely must not do that. Do not do it. Always read the question carefully, because it's so easy to, to get the wrong idea and do the wrong thing. So I might write actors in the answer space here, and that would be a wrong answer. In each sentence below, a word has three letters missing. The letters are next to each other, so like act here, and they spell a word. 
write the missing word in the brackets. So for example, this is going to become capital and what we write is cap, not capital. So here we don't write actors, we write act. And if the three letters that we find aren't a word, then they aren't the answer. On holiday, I lost my wall. Wall. Okay, it's wallet, isn't it? But I wasn't going to look at this one, so it'd be let. But anyway, 37, that's what I was going to do. The children all enjoyed the school. So the first thing I think of here is the school fate. But that's E-T-E. -E -T -E, and E-T-E -E is not a word. So that actually is not the answer, even though it could complete the sentence. What else? The children all enjoyed the school. F -f 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 three letters. Fair. Air. Now there's another one that I think could be an answer here. Has anyone else put it in the comments? No, nobody has. I think that you could really get away with arm. Farm. Because there are some schools that have little mini farms. Just a few. But, you know, schools that keep a pig and a few chickens or something like that to sort of teach children about how food is produced and um, children might enjoy it. But fair is a much more likely answer. And there's a risk that if you put something that should be right but isn't on the mark scheme, it's still going to be marked wrong because not all markers are thinking through the questions. They're just going through the mark scheme and are going tick, cross, cross, tick and so on. Onwards. Um, so... Find a word that can go in front of each of the words to form three new words. So in the example, you have where, times, and how, and some could go in front. Somewhere, sometimes, and somehow. And notice that the answers have to be, each have to be a single word, not things that are hyphenated, not two separate words that belong together. They have to be a single word. Okay, so let's look at the first one here. Some. I don't know, fulsome, full break, full writing, no. Um, I, break, I think, is a real clue here. So what break can you have? You know, foot break, foot some foot writing, no. Um, hand break, hand some, handsome, handwriting. Are all of these single words? Yes. So we write the word that we're putting in front as our answer, hand. Okay, uh, I'm going to do 42 properly, but the next one's um, pin, pinball, pincushion, pinhole, uh, water, watercolour, waterworks, waterproof, out, outlook, outside, outlet. Um, okay, 42. Let's think about this in a bit more detail. So something port, seaport, airport, I don't know, word, code word, but you can't have code port or code iron, um, password, passport, but pass ion doesn't work. So you're stuck. Giving a chance for this to percolate through and people to go, no, 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 you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Okay, so this is what I mentioned earlier. You have to be very sensitive to the ways in which the sounds of words can change. For instance, when you combine them. So we have ion and pass, but when you put those together, the result is not pass ion. It is passion completely different word that is not a combination of those two. So all the other words we've looked up here, handsome, handbrake, handwriting, um, passport, password, all these things have essentially been made by combining two ideas. Handsome a little bit less, but the others very clearly. Um, but pass ion, no, this has got nothing to do with passing and it's got nothing to do with ions. It's a totally different word, passion. And the pronunciation is totally different as well to match. So these are the sorts of moments when you need to be on your toes. Be very aware of things having different sounds and changing their sounds when you mess with them, just as you need to be aware of things like, for example, a word potentially being both a verb and an adjective, just to pluck an example out of the air. Right, onwards. There are 100 questions here. We are up to question 43. Um, we will look at, what have I chosen here, um, 43, 46 and 47. Okay, don't forget to read the question, Robert. Find the word that completes the third pair of words, so that's like this, 
So you can do this kind of thing with the examples so that you work out what's going on, so that it follows the same pattern as the first two pairs. So this is the kind of question where you really need to take time with the example to work out what's going on because it's not fully explained just by the question. So sight, sit, so the E seems to have gone. Cute, cut, same thing. Pipe, okay, so we now know that the rule is that the final E needs to be removed, so pipe becomes pip. So we've worked out from the first two examples that the rule is that we lose the E, and that's our answer. Right, 43, switch to which? So we seem to have lost the first letter. Tripe, ripe, yep, we've lost the first letter. So preach, we're going to lose that, and it's going to become reach. 46, olive, evil, strap, part. What's going on here? So olive and evil, you might just be able to imagine a little mirror line there. Live and evil are reflections of each other. Okay, another way of putting it is that we take the last four letters and write them the other way around. Strap, so we've taken trap and reversed it to part. Creed, so we take read and we reverse it D-E-E-R, dear. Make sure it's the right spelling of deer. This is deer, the animal, not deer, the uh, affectionate, the, the term of affection. Okay, police, polite. So this C is changed to a T. So there's more than one possibility here. It could be that we're, well, so it could be that we're changing the second to last letter into a T. Let's have a look at the next one. Scream to stream. No, the second to last letter is the same. It's this letter that's changed. C has become T, and in the first one, C has become T. So the rule here is a different kind of rule. We're changing the C's into T's. Does that work in, in, the, um, in our pair here? In sense, change the C into a T, we get intense. Yes, it does work. So this is where you're starting to, you know, we're starting to sort the wheat from the chaff. That's a horrible way to put it, because it's implying that if you get it wrong, you're chaff. So let's not go with that one. Sheep from the goats. How about that? Goats are wonderful, even if they are slightly stinky. But, you know, it's the summer, so maybe you're slightly stinky too. I... Yeah, um, so sheep from goats. Um, because sometimes there is more than one possibility, and you have to keep an open mind and be flexible. Oh, now my monitor's threatening to turn off. Um, there we are. No, thank you. Okay, onwards. Uh, the next questions are more code words. It's not too difficult, but I've covered this loads in other videos. Look at my other reasoning videos. I think I have some videos specifically on this in my shorts. I've said before, look for my video list. Okay, so we're flying along here. We're pushing right on, and we are on to... Um... Okay, and we're now on to some puzzles. And this is the kind of thing that I think is more enjoyable and more interesting. And what you need to concentrate on now is not exactly what answer I get, because you're almost certainly never going to see these exact questions again. What you need to concentrate on is the way, is the style of reasoning that I'm using, the ways in which I try to tease out answers to these questions. So let's just glance through the questions, first of all, to get a sense of what sort of things. That's who had pizza, who gave David pyjamas, who chose the burger, what did Bradley have for lunch? Okay, so we're working out who did what, basically. Now I'm going to read through. David invited three friends to his birthday party, Ranjit, Jennifer and Bradley. They each chose something different for lunch, either hot dog pizza or a burger, and each brought him a different present, either a book, a model or pyjamas. Ranjit did not order a pizza, but he brought a book. Jennifer had a hot dog, Bradley bought a model. So sometimes with these, as you'll see later, the best thing is to sort of write out a table. But I think with this one, there's a relatively limited amount of information. I think you'll see that we can get into this a bit more directly. Who had pizza for lunch? Well, it wasn't Ranjit. Ranjit did not order a pizza. Jennifer had a hot dog, so it wasn't her either. So it must be Bradley. He's the only one who can have had pizza, because it wasn't Ranjit and it wasn't Jennifer. So therefore, we know that it was Bradley. Oh dear! No, no, we'll go back to the. We'll come onto the flights in a bit. So we got Bradley. Okay, who gave David pajamas for his birthday? So, Ranjit brought a book. Bradley brought a model. 
So it must be Jennifer. Same process of elimination. As I said, there's not too much information here. And for these first two, we've just been able to say uh, you know, the other two do something else. So it must be the one who's left over. It's just about reading it carefully, basically. Um, right. Who chose the burger? So it wasn't Jennifer because she had a hot dog. But was it Bradley or was it Ranjit? And this is where we need to go back through what we've already done because it was Bra Bradley had pizza. We've discovered that as our answer to 54. So Bradley didn't have the burger. Jennifer didn't, she had a hot dog. So it must be Ranjit. He's the only option. So Ranjit chose the burger. Okay, and what did Bradley have for lunch? That was a bit of a gimme. Okay, onwards. So that's a bit of a warm up for these logic questions. Not too challenging, but you do need to be systematic about it. Now, with this one, we're being asked to find out when each of these flights landed. It's all about when they landed. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. But we've got a lot of information here. Four planes have landed at Manchester Airport from Dubai, New York, Paris and Cardiff. The Dubai flight was delayed for four hours, but the others landed on schedule. The New York flight landed two hours before the flight from Cardiff. The Paris, oh goodness me. So this is the kind of question where I would not advise you just to plunge in and pull out the information because you're at extreme risk of getting into a tangle. Instead, I would take some notes. So I'm going to use the space uh, just below the answer space here to do this. So what do we know? Which flight do we know a time for? The Dubai flight was scheduled to land at 10.15. So 10.15, um, I'm going to write Dubai, but they're all different letters, N, D, C, and P. Dubai, but scheduled. That's not when it actually landed necessarily, okay? These are just notes for myself. It doesn't matter whether the marker can understand them. I need to be able to understand them, as of course do you watching this. I hope you understand. Right. What else do we know about the Dubai flight? The Dubai flight was delayed for four hours. Okay, so what's 10.15 plus four hours? Plus two hours is 12.15 plus another two is 2.15 in the afternoon. To keep it easy to understand, I'm gonna use the 24 hour clock. So I'm gonna call this 14.15, because then it's easier, it's just 10 plus four is 14. Uh, so the 24 hour clock is very useful when you're doing maths. So four hour delay, and that is the Dubai flight. That's when it actually lands. Okay. Which other ones are related to the Dubai flight? The Paris flight landed 15 minutes after the Dubai flight. So 14.30, that's the Paris flight. And half an hour ahead of the plane from Cardiff. So the Paris flight was half an hour ahead of the plane from Cardiff. So the plane from Cardiff was half an hour later. So that's three o'clock, 1500. Um, so um, plane from Cardiff, okay. What else have we got? The New York flight landed two hours before the flight from Cardiff. Cardiff is 1500, so this is two hours before it's 1300. So you see what I mean, that the 24 hour clock makes this nice and easy. That's a New York flight. Okay, now we've got our times. That feels like it took a lot of time, but remember, we've got, we've got half a minute per question. So for these four, you've got two minutes. You probably did some of the earlier questions more quickly. So you can afford to take the time that I've just taken for this, because now all we need to do is write the answers in. When did the New York flight land? It landed at 1300. Um, you could write 1 p.m. as well, that would be fine. So if you wrote 1 p.m., that would also be no problem. When did the Dubai flight land? 14.15 or 2.15 p.m. When did the Cardiff flight land? 1500. 3 p.m. When did the Paris flight land? 14.30, 2.30 p.m. Okay, um, it's Yaboy Yash says, is it live right now? Uh, no, uh, you're watching a a pre-recording um, in which I am, yeah, yeah, it's, it's live, it's live. Um, um, but uh, thank you very much for coming back to watch it um, and for your patience when I was absolutely determined not to miss the end of the cricket, tragic as that was. Okay, onwards. Uh, this is hidden words in sentences. I've done loads of these. They're not that difficult. You need to be systematic about it. Try, 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 try. But the thing about this is there's a common theme. So once you've worked out the theme, it becomes easier to spot the things in this, such as, for example, the word lobster. There's one thing here that's a little bit different. Normally, these are just asking you to look for four letter words. 
or at any rate the words are always the same length. Here the words are different lengths but they tell you how many letters each word is going to be so you need to pay attention to that. Um, yeah. Fish, crab, lobster, seal, shark, they're all sea creatures. Right, logic question here, so we'll spend a bit more time on this. Four teachers, Mr. Kenny, Miss Trump, Mr. Hoy and Mr. Wiggins, have rooms on the same side of a corridor. I don't know whether you're old enough to uh, recognise the connection between these names. Uh, I'll leave it to the live comments to see whether someone can tell me uh, what these, where these names have been taken from. Um, no googling. Okay, uh, rooms on the same side of a corridor. Mr. Kenny is not next to Miss Trot, Mr. Hoy is next to Miss Trot and Mr. Wiggins, whose classrooms are at each end, whose classrooms are in the middle. Okay, so Mr. Hoy is next to Miss Trot and Mr. Wiggins, so that must mean, because they're on the same side of a corridor, they're not in a circle, so if Hoy is next to Trot and Wiggins, then we got Hoy with Trot and Wiggins. We don't know what order, but we aren't told about left or right, north, south or anything anyway, okay? Mr. Kenny is not next to Miss Trot. No, keeping them apart. Um, so that has to be over there. THWK, whose classrooms are at each end of the corridor. Um, you could write Mr. and Miss, but frankly, let's just keep this simple. Um, Trot and Kenny. I really don't think you're gonna get penalized for not writing Mr. or Miss. Whose classrooms are in the middle of the corridor. Um, Hoy and Wiggins. Has someone explained the connections between the names yet? Uh, no, they haven't. Famous cyclists, that's what they are. Um, okay, so, um, yes. Right, um, just one thing to note. You can do this kind of thing in your working, that's fine. Nobody's marking that in an exam like this. It's not like a maths test or anything where they're looking at your marking. But if you just write in T, K, H and W in the answer spaces, you're probably going to lose the marks. So make sure that you actually write the names in. Onwards, question 70 out of 100, so we're really flying. Okay, um, this one here, uh, I've written a note to here to say only if, mark, only if making good time. I'm absolutely roasting here and it's late, so I might skip past these. The reason I'm gonna skip past these ones is because you have seen this kind of question in plenty of my maths videos. And it's really a maths question. Um, so I'm going to skip it here. And then we've got letter codes. I've done that so much in my other videos, I'm going to skip that too. Because we've got some questions here that are going to require a little bit more thought. Uh, this one, however, is just relatively quick, but, I'm, but I always think it's good to look at these because when you get the, how to do them, they're quite straightforward. So this is um, a matter of changing words around. So in the sentences below, two words must change places so that sentences make sense. It means in each sentence two words must change places, of course. Underline the two words which must change places. So, for example, the wood was made of table, we need to swap those, the table was made of wood. Now, how do we do this? So, this, this starting method, which will often get you there, is to read through until you get to the first word that doesn't fit. And then you look later for a word to swap it with. Now, when these get a bit funky, sometimes the first word actually does make a kind of sense. And there's only one word that obviously doesn't fit. So then you find it and then you have to look back to say, well, which word could I swap it with? But let's get to that if we get to it. Um, first thing you're doing is just reading through, looking for something that doesn't work. Sharks are not as people as dangerous think. So people is crying out to me as something that doesn't belong there. Sharks are not as people as dangerous think. As dangerous think, what does that mean? Can we swap those? Sharks are not as dangerous as people think. And now we've got a sentence that makes sense. So it's clearly people and dangerous. Let's try the same thing on 81. I can hear the crowd, so that all works. I can hear the crowd of the, the crowd of the, now it's a bit confusing. Which of those words doesn't fit though? The of, maybe? I can hear the crowd of the sound. Maybe we swap sound and of. I can hear the crowd sound the of. Not quite. I can hear the crowd sound the attack, maybe, but crowd sound the of is a little bit, um, yeah, a little bit idiosyncratic. Good word for you there. Um, no, not that. Well, hang on, sound. It's a noun. What are the nouns we got here? Crowd. So they might be swappable. I can hear the sound of the crowd. And we got it. 
So this one actually is a little bit like what I spoke about. You don't immediately think that crowd is in the wrong place. It's only when you've read on that you look back and realize that our ah, crowd might need changing, even though I can hear the crowd make sense in its own right. So you need to be flexible. Right, I'm going to push on because, as I said, um, I don't want this to be a super long lesson. Um, we've been going about 35 minutes or something. Um, so, uh, yeah, so let's keep moving on and then we'll be finished relatively soon because we're only going up to 100 questions here. Um, and once I've done the questions, I'm going to wrap up pretty quickly because I know it's like late and I really appreciate you all staying behind to be here. Um, you're a wonderful audience. Okay, in leech, in leech, leech. Ein. No, in each line below, underline two words. One from each set of brackets, which together will make one correctly spelled word. The word on the left always comes first, okay? So, a little bit there to unpack, but black and blackbird, okay? Blackbird goes together. Right. Um, 85. So, what we need to do is we need to be systematic. Yes, you could just try and plunge in and see the answer, but the trouble is if you spend ages trying to spot the answer and don't find it, then you have to go to back to the beginning and be systematic and you've lost time. I would favour just being systematic quickly. Cup top, cup board, cup pile. This is something we spoke about before. Pass ion, no, it's passion. So you always need to be sensitive to different sounds. Not cup board, but cupboard. Okay, skip to the last one because I want to get onto the interesting and rather tricky questions at the end. They're good, the questions over the page, hang around. Um, one person just left. No, don't do that. Um, <laughs> you can leave if you want, it's not a prison. Um, <laughs> probably feels like it. Okay, all mail. All mail, that's, uh, that's in your Gmail inbox where you want to see everything, not filtered into categories, all your spam and everything, but it's two words anyway. All mail, Olsen. Hey dude, that was Olsen. No, no, no. No to my accent, no to my attempt to be a dude, and no to the word which does not exist. All times. All times? No, not even an American would, would stoop so low as to say the word all times, I hope. Um, apologies to any Americans watching. I love you really. Female. That'd be nice if I'd uh, come to my desk on a Monday morning and find female, but it isn't yet a word. Fusen, few times. Some mail, normal, could cope with that. Much mail would be more common. Samson, Samson, who pulled down the temple. No, no, no. Sometimes, yes, of course, that's the answer. I've just drawn that out because I'm waffling. Out of, it must be out of excessive affection for the sound of my own voice. Uh, these next three questions are just, they're just preposterously easy. So I'm gonna skip them for that reason because you guys are too smart for them. And now we have the kind of question you're all here for. This is what you've been waiting around. This is why five people have just joined the live lesson because they've been waiting for this question. Um, because they just want to look at this massive wall of text and see how we can pull an answer out of it. So, this is about which of the boys liked what or left things behind. So I'm just scanning the questions to see what kinds of questions they are. So I know what I'm looking for as I read. Right, gymnast. Can you see what they were doing there? It's, I mean, that's just, that's a classic teacher joke. And on behalf of all teachers, I apologize. Jim Nast took his three sons, Max Nast, Neil Nast, and Louis Nast to the zoo. Um, there were some worse name combinations there he could have chosen, so glad he hasn't used those. Um, his sons were so excited to see their favorite animals that each left something behind in the zoo. Typical behavior, um, yep. Um, the boy who left his coat in the back cave, definitely something my wife would do, liked the tiger the best. Max's favourite animal was the lion, but he did not lose his phone. Okay, so we're not dealing with a sort of Quentin Blake cautionary tale in which he feeds the phone to the lion and gets eaten himself or something. Um, Max's favourite animal was the... No, it's Hilaire Belloc. It's Hilaire Belloc, isn't it? And they're illustrated by Quentin Blake, I think. Um, anyway, tangent there. Someone can correct me. Uh, one of Jim's sons was most excited to see the elephant, but this was not Neil. It was not Neil Nast or Nile Nast. Fortunately, Jim was able to clear blah, 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 blah. Okay. There's a lot of information. We're going to want to represent this in some way. So what I would like to do in a situation like this, I would like a little bit of a table. Now, 
this is the examiner's marking space. You should not draw in that. So, oops, I've just drawn it and my rubber isn't working. There we are. Um, so I'm going to do it underneath instead. So what can we do here? So I'm going to do a simple table that's the child, the animal, and the thing. So we got child M, we got Max, we've got Neil or Niall, and we've got Louis or Lewis. Who knows? Who knows what any of these people are called, how they how it is pronounced. Um, all I know is they've got an unfortunate surname. Um, it's too easy for punning. Right, and each of them is associated with an animal and a regrettable item of lost property. Let's call this column item. So we've got, we got the children, we've got the animals, and we've got the items. Now let's start filling this in. So the boy who left his coat in the bat cave liked the tiger the best. Doesn't really help us because we don't know who left their coat in the bat, bat cave. Max's favourite animal was the lion. Brilliant, we can fill this in. Okay, so a lion. Nathan Lyon, not my favourite person today. Um, Max, his item, well, we know that he did not lose his phone. So let's note that. Let's put P for phone and cross it out. So that will not be the phone. One of Jim's sons was most excited to see the elephant. Is that helpful? But it was not Neil. Well, great, it could be either of the others. No, it wasn't okay because M Max was most excited to see the lion and it wasn't Neil who was most excited to see the elephant so it must be Louis so we'll just put Elep for elephant again only I need to understand this table so we're going through we're filling in fortunately Jim was able to collect that okay so let's go back now so we fill those things in what else can we do the boy who left his coat in the bat cave liked the tiger the best but we don't know who liked the tiger the best look at our table yes we do because there's only one person left and this person left their coat in the bat cave so now we fill that in and we know that somebody left their phone behind but it wasn't max so it must be louis and what's the other object um, it's the hat. So now we got it. Which of the boys like the tiger the best? Don't just write N, they want the name. Neil Nast. Which of the boys like the elephant the best? That will be Louis. Which of the boys left his phone behind? That's also Louis. Do not be put off by this. So, I mean, do be put off by my handwriting. It's, a, it's an offence against all human decency. But don't be put off by having the same answer twice. There's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't. And in fact, there are only three boys and there are four answers. So you are going to have somebody's name at least twice. Which of the boys left his hat in the cafe? And that is Max. And there we have it. So even though drawing a table looks like a time sink, actually it's a time saver because it allows you to get to the answer efficiently without reading the thing 10 times or whatever. Um, so when you get a wall of text like this, start to think, how can I represent this in a way that will help me? Notes will really, really, really help you. Right, we're almost there. Uh, this is it, these are the last four, okay? But this one is a little bit fiendish. And there's some real twists here, and unless I've missed something, you actually need to use the questions for clues as well as the um, the text. So Bryony, Caroline, Celia and Katie competed in their school sports day. The girls were all friends, but they all wanted to win. Quite right, quite right team. The events were the 1500 meters, the 100 meter, the long jump and the high jump. And then just, just glance at the questions. Which event did Bryony, which event did Katie, which events did Caroline, which events did Celia? Now, I just want you to take a moment thinking about those questions because there's an absolutely enormous clue in there even before we've looked at the rest of the text. Can you see what it is? Can you see? The questions tell us that Bryony and Kate each competed in only one event and that Caroline and Celia competed in more than one event. And that is absolutely crucial information. So we look on Bryony who competed in one running event, she did blah blah blah, only one of the girls completed three, Caroline, I'm not going to absorb all of this just by reading it, it's far too much. I need some way to set this out. 
Now, how is this data presented? Now, in the previous question, if we go back, there were actually three parameters, basically. There were the children's names, there were the animals, and there were the objects. But in this question, there are only two parameters, the names and the events they competed in. So this is really, really, really inviting us to create a table that looks a bit like this, a table where you have the names and you have the events, and then we fill in the boxes. So this is the kind of skill you get through practice, working out the best ways to organize the information in your mind, but also on the page. So we've got four names here. We've got Bryony, Caroline, Celia, and Katie. In an exam, you want to save time, so we'll say Bryony, Caroline, Celia, and Katie. That will do us. So there we are. There we have it. And let's do some lines there because we're looking for checkboxes. And we've got four events. We've got the 1500, the 100, the long jump, and the high jump. So we've got the 1500, the uh, 100, the long jump, and the high jump. I'm sorry I can't show this all on one screen. I'm going to have to be scrolling up and down. Um, but even if you don't fully understand what I'm doing now, I think if you print out the question paper, which is linked in the video description, of course, and have a go at filling this in while I'm talking through the question, then have a go at doing it yourself uh, on a fresh printout, you'll get the hang of what I'm doing here. Um, and I really think, in my opinion, that doing a table like this is a time saver, because otherwise the risk is that you'll just be staring at this and trying to work things out and wasting far more time than if you just set it out like this. Now we know from carefully reading the questions, and this is why I said there are important clues in the questions, that Bryony and Kate each competed in only one event. So they only compete in one event. So these are just my notes here. It's all of it, just my notes, but you know, okay. And we know that Caroline and Celia competed in more than one. Now what can we fill in? Bryony only competed in one running event in which she did not race any of her friends. Okay, so Bryony is going to be, so she didn't complete in the jumping events, but she competed in one of the running events. Only one of the girls competed in three of the events and none did all four. So, we know that Caroline and Celia competed, each competed in more than one event, but we know that only one of them competed in three, so the other one must have competed in two. So it's three or two, you shouldn't write in this column, sorry, um, I'm just, you know, being bad. Three or two, one of them is two and one of them is three. Okay, so that should also help us. Caroline competed in two events, but was not beaten by Celia, who won the 100 meters. So Celia competed in the 100 meters. Okay. But she was not beaten by Celia, but Celia won. So therefore, Caroline didn't compete in it. Okay. Now, we also know that Bryony only competed in one running event and she did not race any of her friends. Well, Celia was racing in the 100 meters, so therefore Bryony must have been racing in the 1500. And we know Bryony's only doing one thing, so she wasn't in the 100. So Bryony's dealt with now. Great. In what event did Bryony compete? She competed in the 1500 meters. Um, I am going to take, yeah, I'm just going to write that in now because we know it, so why not? Okay. Onwards. Caroline competed in two events but was not beaten by Celia. Have we dealt with that? Well, we know she wasn't in the 100. You know there were, oh, Caroline competed in two events. Okay, so she's two. Ah, rubber. Which means that Celia is three. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Katie was not involved in either of the running events. Two girls entered the long jump, but the high jump featured Celia and two others. High jump featured Celia and two others must be these two. Now we know that Katie only competes in one event, so that's her done. And we know that two girls entered the long jump, so that's these two. Ah, scroll, come on. So that's two for Caroline, that's what we got. And that's three for Celia, that's what we got. So we're all filled in. In which event did Katie compete? The high jump. Don't write HJ, you might get the mark, but don't risk it. Write it out in full. You don't need to write the. In which events did Caroline compete? The long jump and high jump. 
I just write long and high jump. In which events did Celia compete? 100 meters. They haven't given advanced space really. Um, long and high jump. And we're there. We have made it. And that's question 100. So fantastic. I'm kind of pleased, uh, pleasantly surprised that we made it through. I didn't want to spread this over two lessons. And although we skipped some things, they're things that I cover a lot in other videos. And I hope I've given you some interest by covering some of the more challenging and thought provoking questions in this paper. Um, Poetic T says, wait, what is happening? Why is everyone agreeing with flame? I don't know what happened. Um, I have no idea what's going on. I haven't really been following the comments, but I hope you're being nice to each other. Um, please only be nice in the comments. Thank you. Um, I've just been focusing on romping through this. Right, normally here I would go to the tip of the week and I would go to your questions, but it's nearly 25 past eight in the evening. You've got better things to do than listening to me witter on. So I am instead going to draw this to a conclusion. Uh, thank you once again for checking in so late and allowing me to watch the end of the cricket. I, I appreciate it enormously. You are wonderful. And uh, thank you also to everybody who's tuned in subsequently to watch this, uh, because of course all my videos stay up on the channel. You can find a list of them in the video description. As I'm saying every lesson at the moment, you can send me a piece of your writing. It might be a piece of creative writing, a description, an essay, a letter, anything for free feedback. Google 11 plus lifeline, there is a special offer where as long as you're not someone who's already sent me work in the past, you can send me a work for completely free feedback with no commitment. Um, there's no catch to it, there's a word limit on how much I'll mark, but you can send me something longer, I just may not get through all of it. Um, yeah, there really is no secret catch here. You send me work, I have a look at it, I send you free feedback. The idea is it gives a taster of my 11 plus lifeline marking service so that you might be interested at some point in signing up for that in the future, but there's no commitment. So if you want to get my personal feedback delivered in voice comments like this and video comments like this, and normally also featuring some cats in videos, um, giving you their own fascinating feedback, follow up on that offer. Right, you want to get to your dinner. I want to get out of this heat. I've got a light here. I've got a light there. It's all so humid. It's like being in a Turkish bath, which is great when you want to be, but not when you're trying to live stream. So I'm going to bow out now and I'm going to drink some deliciously cold coffee. All right, everybody, have a wonderful evening and I will see you um, next week, I think, at at a more orthodox time, if um, necessary sporting events or whatever, don't intervene. All right, bye folks.